Well, hello, my daisy cakes. <laughs> I'm just trying that out. Who does have old cat John? Let me know down in the comments. But I am dressed in my Star Trek uniform, so you know that means I'm going to talk about some science fiction. And because I don't have a video plan today, I decided to just browse the internet and look up some science fiction lists and do a little reaction video. And I found a list from Good Housekeeping. Yes, you heard me right. Good Housekeeping has listed the 20 best sci-fi books of all time. So I guess this has the Good Housekeeping seal of approval. So let's see the 20 best sci-fi books of all time. And it says from science fiction classics to modern marvels. <laughs> it's by Liz Schumer, published October 28, 2022. So browsing right along. Okay, it looks like they're starting with number one first, which is fine. Uh, this is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Is this the number one science fiction novel of all time? I guess I can see the argument. It's one of the earliest science fiction novels, and there is a little bit of science in it, although it's more along the themes of what makes a human a human. I could see the argument as one of H.G. Wells's being the number one, if we're talking about influence on science fiction, like War of the Worlds or Time Machine or something like that. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, I'm okay with it being in the number one spot. Number two is Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel author of Station Eleven. I have not read this. I am not, I have to be in the right mood to read a post-apocalyptic novel, which I believe these are, and I've heard of Station Eleven more than I've heard of Sea of Tranquility. I haven't read this, so I can't really comment on it. I certainly wouldn't have it as my number two spot. Okay, number three is Dune by Frank Herbert. You know what's interesting? Looking back, it has the publisher, Ace, Pan Macmillan, but it doesn't have the year they're published, which is interesting. Okay, anyway, I personally, as far as Dune goes, sort of read God Emperor of Dune and said, I'm good. <laughs> personally, I would just recommend the first three books as a solid sci fi. Trilogy, Dune, Dune Messiah, Children of Dune. I don't think you need to go past that, but your mileage may vary. So the top three here are Dune, Sea of Tranquility, and Frankenstein. I'm not sure if those would be mine. I'm sure those would not be mine, but it's interesting. This is good housekeeping. By the way, let me know your top three in the comments below. And while you're there, of course, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my Chanel. I'm going to be thinking about this, and I'll let you know what my top three are at the end of all this. But let's keep going with the good housekeeping <laughs> A list of best sci-fi books of all time. That's what it said. Number four, oh, Madeline Langle's A Wrinkle in Time published by Squarefish, apparently. And this is one of my favorite covers. I love this cover with the, uh, what is it? Ms. Who, Ms. What's It, and I forget the names, but I love seeing the witches. I love this cover, my favorite cover. And I love Wrinkle in Time. Science fiction, yes, and it's a juvenile science fiction. Yeah, I may put this in a top 20 list. I can see it there. Number four, though, that's pretty highly ranked, so I wouldn't put it there, but I kind of am tickled that Wrinkle of Time is on this list. Number five, Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess. Okay, if you can get more opposite to Wrinkle of Time uh, as a children's book, it's Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess. Again, I am not mad to see it here. What he does with language in this book is remarkable. 
It's a uh, very disturbing book to read. It's a disturbing movie adaptation to watch. Um, but I am fine seeing A Clockwork Orange in this list. Number six, hmm, a Murakami. Uh, Haruki Murakami, 84, IQ 84. I have not read this one, so I can't really comment on it. I. It's interesting that Murakami, a Japanese writer, is on this list. I kind of feel like I should read this, but um, it says it's a spiritual descendant of George Orwell's 1984. So if you have read this, let me know down in the comments what you think. Number seven, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Oh, all five books is listed here, the complete collection. As humorous, satirical science fiction goes, this is it. Douglas Adams, Hitchhiker's Guide. Absolutely, 100% see it on this list. Number eight, How High We Go by Sequoia Nagamatsu. I have not read this, so God, I remember seeing this in Shelf It or Shove It, so I know it's a recent, relatively recent publication. Again, there are no years listed. They have the, sometimes they have the publisher, but not the year it was published. Um, I'm curious what you think about it, because I have not read this one. Uh, it says it's uh, archaeologist witnesses the unleashing of an ancient plague buried in the Arctic. So the thing and things just get worse. Okay. Interesting. Number nine. I don't know this one either. FSG originals presents annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. So, oh, it's part book one of a trilogy. Okay. I haven't read this one. You tell me, I believe I saw the movie adaptation, and I believe the movie adaptation is often called Lovecraftian or Cosmic Horror. So, again, can't really say much because I haven't read it. Number 10, Kurt Vonnegut, Sirens of Titan. I love seeing Sirens of Titan as opposed to Slaughterhouse Five because everyone thinks of Slaughterhouse Five, which is fantastic, but Sirens of Titan is great. And oh, I love this. Truly, any Vonnegut would be right at home on this list, but if you love Slaughterhouse Five, you'll devour this one. Okay, so at least they're recognizing Slaughterhouse Five is sort of Vonnegut's claim to fame, because I think his career really took off on a different trajectory after Slaughterhouse Five. Number 11. Fledgling, what? Okay, it's Octavia Butler, Fledgling, Kindred, Fledgling, Collected Stories. Now, I'm not sure why they just didn't say Kindred or one of her novels. My favorite Butler is Wild Seed, but I think Kindred is often on these lists because of the impact it had on sort of social commentary. It's about a Black woman traveling back into the past to see her ancestor, who was a uh, black slave and a white slave owner. Um, I don't know this collected stories edition because Kindred on its own is a complete novel, but Fledgling, is that like a sequel to it? I don't know. I would just say Kindred. Number 12, Shishin Lu's Three Body Problem, which has just been adapted to a Netflix series. I have read the first two books in this series. I found the writing very dense, but of course, that's a translation. Again, I've said this before, it reminds me of the Kisha Tenketsu plot structure that relies a lot on a big twist, which I found in both the first and second books. And the big twist really was effective and propelled me to keep reading it. And I really did love it. Now, I don't know if I'm going to read the third book because the twist, which was so interesting in both the first and second novels, happened around the 60% mark. And it was kind of a struggle to get there for me. And uh, once there, 
the novels took off, but for especially the second novel, it's really hard to read about the end of the human race. And the second novel posited a very bleak view of the universe. And this is a bit of a spoiler, so jump ahead if you don't want spoilers. Okay, if you're still here. It presented the universe as being a dog-eat-dog universe, that there's a certain amount of resources or limited resources in the entire universe, so a sentient race is inevitably going to need all those resources. And so anytime there is a sentient race that announces itself to any other sentient race, they will be wiped out because there can only be one. It's very Highlander. And I'm not sure if I'm really crazy about that outlook in life. I'm going to guess, I haven't read it, but I'm going to guess the third book will walk that back or there'll be like a another set of alien intelligences that are more altruistic or something. I hope they walk it back, but I don't know if I want to take that journey. I don't know. Let me know what you think about Three-Body Problem if you've read all three books. I understand why it's here. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Number 13, The Complete Robot. Okay, why don't they just say iRobot? Why are they giving us collections of books? I'm getting a little suspicious about whoever came up with this list, but okay. Anyway, Asimov's iRobot or his robot story should definitely be in top lists. They are so influential and they're great reading. Um, this says 37 robot stories, the complete robot. Okay, fine. <laughs> Asimov's on there. Left Hand of Darkness. There we go, by Ursula K. Le Guin. Um, feminist science fiction, maybe the earliest feminist science fiction. But you know, I'm a big fan of Ursula K. Le Guin, and I definitely think Left Hand of Darkness should be on any best sci-fi list. Number 15, The City We Became by N.K. Jemison. I really like N.K. Jemison. This is not the novel I would put in a best of sci-fi list. That would be one of the Broken Earth novels, the trilogy where each novel in the trilogy won the Hugo. Amazing story. Love that. City We Became is... Okay, it's more of a contemporary fantasy, I think. It's very Lovecraftian, and there's a lot of social commentary. I don't think it would be on my best of list for sci-fi. Definitely no. Number 16, Ray Bradbury's Martian Chronicles. Absolutely yes. I have never seen that cover before. Do Martians have six fingers? I don't really remember. But um, interesting cover. Absolutely would put Martian Chronicles by Ray Bradbury on a best of sci-fi list. Interesting enough, this is a stitch-up novel. These were a collection of short stories published in pulp magazines that Bradbury culled and put together as a what's called a stitch-up novel. Um, Dune was also a stitch-up novel. In fact, a lot of the sort of golden age of sci-fi novels are stitch-ups. They're collections of short stories stuck together as a novel. Anyway, getting back to the Martian Chronicles, I think the writing is very literary. This is not hard science fiction, but it is good science fiction. Number 17, Who Fears Death by Nanetti Okorafor. I have not read this novel. I've only read one Nanetti Okorafor, and that was Noor. And it was okay. It was fine. I just didn't really understand why I was hearing so much about Nanetti Okorafor. So I 
feel as though I read the wrong book to get me introduced into this author. Maybe it should be Who Fears Death. 10th anniversary edition. It's been out for 10 years. So yeah, let me know if you've read it. If you think this is one of the top sci-fi books of all time, let me know down in the comments or let me know what Nanetti Okorafor book I should read next to really get me into their writing because I don't think it was nor. On the other hand, maybe this writer isn't for me. Not every writer is for everyone and that's okay. Number 18, Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishigaro. And yes, this is the one that won the Nobel Prize. This is a very intense novel, and I like seeing it here. Um, the name Kazuo always throws me because my mother's name is Kazuko, which is a female version. Anyway, I was very moved by the novel. It is not fast-paced at all. It's more uh, of an introspective novel, and it's hard talking about without spoiling it, but I recommend, highly recommend. Number 19, Childhood's End by Arthur C. Clarke. I would definitely have that on a best of sci-fi list. I think it might be his best novel. There's an argument for Rendezvous with Rama. A lot of people start with 2001 A Space Odyssey and wondering what the big deal is about Clarke because it's not a great, I think it was a novella. But it was written just for the movie. It wasn't written as a standalone novel. Childhood's End, highly recommend. Glad to see it on a best of sci-fi list. Okay, we're going to number 20, which is going to be the last book on good housekeepings. <laughs> best sci-fi books of all time. <sighs> William Gibson's Neuromancer. I absolutely would have this on a best of list because this is what put cyberpunk on the map. It is gritty. It introduces the Matrix. It is the novel that is the father of all cyberpunk. And I did a whole video on cyberpunk because there are many grandparents of Cyberpunk. But if you're looking for a novel that really announced cyberpunk to the world, it would be absolutely be Neuromancer. So those are the top 20 good housekeeping approved best sci fi novels of all time. Now, for me, it's so hard to put a top three together. But if I were to add to this list or to replace some of these novels, I think I would put Ring World by Larry Niven in there. I think I would maybe put an Anne McCaffrey, Dragon Riders of Pern, in there. I think you would have to have a Robert Heinlein in there. I personally would put in Stranger in a Strange Land because of my relationship with it. But that would sort of be my personal list because that novel really impacted me growing up. But I think more people would probably put in Moon is a Harsh Mistress if they're putting in a Heinlein. Gosh, there's so many other authors. Stanislaw Lem, if you're going to do more international science fiction writers. Um, gosh, what about Alfred Bester or James Tiptree Jr. or Robert Silverberg? Um, Ben Bova, Joe Haldeman, The Forever War. Gosh, that should be on there, right? Kim Stanley Robinson. Oh my gosh, there are just so many science fiction authors I could put in a best of list. If you want me to do my own top 20, let me know down in the comments. It'd be so hard just to limit it to top 20, especially if we're talking about works rather than just authors. But like I said before, put down your top three in the comments below. Until we meet again, may all the books you read be blessed.